Hello everyone, how's it going today? Ah, stretch. I'm sitting out here with uh, the pond, my dog, the sunshine. And the neighbor's dogs, of course, too. They're always there making noise. I got two German shepherds and they play with a bowling ball. They're pretty annoying, but I got used to it. Making videos, they always tend to get all crazy. Um, not because I'm making a video, but it just so happens that when I start a video, it's either the dogs or a siren or something. But, anyhow, I just wanted to, I don't know, to make a video to talk about confidence a little bit. Confidence in ourselves, of course. You know, it's difficult when you consider that word confidence, it's confiding. When you have confidence in someone, it means that you can confide in them. So, let's think about that for a minute and what that really means for the individual. It means you can confide in yourself. It's an interesting concept. I haven't ever, I never really thought about it like that. Having confidence means that you can confide in yourself just the way you'd have confidence in others. And it means you trust your judgment, you trust your assessment on situations. I think confidence can get to the level where some people are so arrogant they refuse to admit that they made a mistake. And this happens, you know, to all of us sometimes when we get too, too into a discussion and we realize, let's say, we're getting off of the main subject and into fallacies and nonsense and we stop ourselves and go, wait a minute, that's just silly. But having confidence in what we believe is something that has to be learned and something that has to be earned. And having confidence in who we are is exactly the same way. You know, the, the more we learn about the world around us, the more we learn about ourselves. And vice versa, the more we learn about ourselves, the more we understand our world. And uh, I think that's a really important thing for people to remember. It's, uh, you can't just be book smart and never talk to people or associate with others and try to, and really understand anything about people. It reminds me of something Manley Hall said. He says you can go to Egypt for, or you could read about Egypt for years, or you could go there for a week and learn more than you could reading everything about it. And you understand it better being there. And uh, I think that that's, uh, it's a good point, and it's the same situation with everything. We can, we can talk about situations. Uh, for example, a doctor who is an expert on uh, drugs or withdrawals or I have a perfect example. Um, years ago, when I got in trouble when I was younger, I, g I got busted growing pot when I was 21, and uh, just a few little plants. Stupidest thing. Had to go on probation. Refused to get, cl refused to to piss clean. I was like, I want to smoke pot, and I'm not going to bow to the system. I was such a rebel, right? Getting myself in trouble. <clears throat> So eventually, my PO said, look, if you just finish this little five-month treatment class, you know, then I'll just, I'll let you get off probation. I said, okay, and I did it. I got to this class, and it was like a, a six-month class where you had to go like three times a week and drive out there. I was the only one in there for cannabis. And there were people, <laughs> there were some serious troublemakers in that class, and there were some people who looked really strung out. A whole wide variety of people, and a couple of people who look just like me, like they should not be there. Um, it was ludicrous. But the people who ran the class, it was a husband and wife, and they worked for the state, and they went to the restitution center to do their little drug class. Neither one of them had ever done drugs, and had never been an addict. Now, this is a perfect metaphor, an example, or a representation for so many things in our society. Everybody thinks that they're an expert on everything. But if they haven't experienced it, they don't know shit. And I remember when we found out that they'd never even done drugs before, and, and somebody was like, how can you hold a class where you're telling people how to get clean and, and how to better their lives when you've never even had to go through it yourself? But the icing on the cake was that every time we take a break from the class, this husband and wife would rush down the stairs, out into the front, to smoke as many cigarettes as they could before the class started again. Uh, 
this is the, you know, it's just, it, it's the hypocrisy of, of our world, of our people, uh, that we're so quick to point the finger at other people and not even see our own addictions and the problems it's causing us. You know, for example, here I am with what they might call a cannabis addiction as a kid, but back then I wasn't even, you know, yeah, I smoked it a lot, but I, I guess I could have considered myself a cannabis addict, but I didn't smoke it uh, constantly. And I, I, the one day I decided to quit smoking pot, I did it cold turkey after 20 years. Didn't have any withdrawals, and I was fine for two years. So it's not the kind of thing where you're going to suffer heavily. It's just a change of perspective. It's kind of like Kratom would be very similar, although there may be some withdrawal symptoms that the more a person focuses on it, the worse it's going to be. Um, if you fill your time with other things and eat properly and get exercise, you generally just blow right past it. That's how it is with cannabis, too. And it's because I had the confidence to know that I could quit. But, you know, comparing that to cigarettes, I know is, of course, not one and the same, drugs and cigarettes. But here, you know, here we have people who are telling others to quit smoking pot, but they're smoking something that's shown to kill millions of people. Whereas cannabis has never been shown to kill anyone. And I find that to be interesting. And I know some people will always argue that point by saying something like, oh, that's not true. People have been in car accidents while in cannabis, or, you know, blood pressure may rise. I, it's not even worth the debate because everything has killed someone, okay? It doesn't matter what it is. People are allergic to very strange things. Some people have very strange reactions to drugs. But what you have to do is take the general consensus reality of everybody who does something and say, how dangerous really is this? And that, you know, to back to confidence, I think that that's, um, to have confidence in what we're doing in our lives and knowing that it's good or bad, it's often difficult to gauge whether or not we're going down the right path or we're hurting ourselves. I've known a lot of addicts and I've had addictions in my life and I know what it's like to delude yourself and convince yourself, well, I'm not addicted or this isn't a problem. Uh, and it's not that the person's even aware of the problems. Like, I'm well aware of my addictions. I, I know that I have addictions. I take Kratom, I vape, and I smoke pot. Those are my, you know, crutches, if you will. But I'm totally in touch with that, and I'm confident with knowing that as long as I'm still functioning and doing my life, who is anybody else to judge and tell another person what they should be doing? It's, um, it's a matter of personal choice, like anything. I've tried to justify my addictions in the past, but I've learned that having the confidence in yourself to realize that you know what's best and that we don't always maybe make the best decisions for ourselves. For example, I quit smoking about a year and a, a, year and a half ago, a little less, and the whole time I was smoking, I was well aware I was smoking, and I was well aware it was dangerous. And I remember going into the grocery store sometimes and he, having the clerk say something like, Oh, you know those are dangerous. Oh, you know those will kill you. And I'd be like, Shut your fucking mouth. Are you really, are you for real here? I mean, and it would always be the guy that never smoked. Or the guy that just quit smoking. Um, I see this regularly. The people who had problems in their life with a certain thing often want to rub that off onto everybody else as if they have the same problem, you know? Or maybe rub their problem off onto other people. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go now because it's too noisy out here, and I'm kind of down. Jeez, man, party time with the dogs. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to y'all.